Welcome everybody to the seasonal diet, eating what our ancestors ate, when they ate it, like we were evolved to do. Goat milk and sheep's milk. Uh, so staying on the theme here uh, this week about the ancestral diet in the early to midsummer that we're in the season of now. It would be very little meat in the diet at this time of year and a drop in protein uh, and other valuable nutrients that come from meat. The way humans make up for this was an increased amount of protein from other foods. Dairy is one of the main ones here as livestock produces more dairy, chickens produce more eggs at this time of year. Now today we think about cattle as our main source of dairy, but depending on where your ancestors are from in the world, goat and even sheep's milk might have been an even bigger part of the diet in early humans. So goats ha are believed to have been domesticated around 8000 BC. Sheep even earlier believed to be domesticated as early as 11,000 BC. So this is longer than even cattle actually, depending on where the world we are talking about. So as long as humans have domesticated these animals, these animals' milk have been a part of our diet. So in the Middle East, we're looking at something like 10,000 years and then slowly spreading later on to other parts of Europe and the world as far as we know, but it could be a lot longer in other places. So the difference in these types of milks is actually a lot more than you might think. At first look, um, it might not be that much, especially in ancient times, we have no idea about the actual nutrition facts uh, in these different types of milks. For what we know today, goat's milk is in general a bit higher in fat and calories than cow milk, and it also contains more vitamins and minerals and protein than cow's milk. Pound for pound, right? Sheep's milk actually has even more nutrients than goat's milk, but it's uh, very much full of fat and calories. So in ancient times, sheep's milk would have actually been the most valuable and nutrient dense, and you can almost taste it if you've ever had it. It's just so filling, and it would be very uh, valuable either way when getting calories back in ancient times was the main concern. So it just makes sense, right? The sheep is the smaller animal, just like most other things in nature, the smaller things pack more nutrients pound for pound. Cow milk actually produces the least amount of nutritional value, but it produces the largest amount of milk. Goat is right in the middle of the milk volume and nutrition, and sheep is the smallest amount, but the most nutrient dense. They can all be used in similar ways, of course. Cooking and uh, milks and cheeses and all this other stuff, yogurts. It comes down to taste and what you prefer at the end of the day. I'm not talking about all the recipes in this video, but what I do want to talk about is the seasonal and even regional variability in your ancestors' diets. You will notice that drier places in the world, such as the Middle East, have a much longer tradition of goat meat and milk too than cattle. And that's because cows need a whole lot of food and grass and open fields and there's just not a whole lot of fresh green grass going around in the desert. So note that climate changes all the time and there may have been tons of grass in the Middle East in many places if we go back thousands of years after the Ice Age for example. But uh, at least in the past few thousand years that we know of, um, more goat's milk in the Middle East. Let's say, next example, if your ancestors are from the open green mountains of Switzerland or southern Germany, cow's milk would have been more of a part of your ancestors' diet. Let's say your ancestors might be from the big open fields of green and hills like in Scotland, Wales, Ireland, England. Definitely more sheep's milk in your ancestors' diets, although in, in the British Isles you could pretty much have any kind of livestock, really great for livestock uh, in general there. However, in Scandinavia, if we go there, and even, you know, northern Germany and moving further into the east of Europe, not so much anymore today, but in ancient times, for the longest, longest periods of history, it was very, very dense forests here or rocky fjords like in Scandinavia. And these are places where uh, goats actually do best. So for Scandinavian or um, people with Germanic ancestry, maybe more goat's milk for us. But again, I don't wanna get it confused. Definitely all three of these animals' milk were used in all of these places. 
they would use all three types even though it would be kind of uh, favoring uh, one specific animal. But my point is that we are definitely not living like this today. When is the last time you had some sheep or goat's milk? The reality is that it would have been a very good balance between the three previously in history. Also, uh, seasons are going to play a role in this too. Cattle would be sent out over larger areas in the summer. Um, and they're a pain in the ass to track down and get milk. Imagine having to chase your cows down every morning when they're running free in the fields, maybe miles away, and you have to milk their tits like that. It just would not be uh, the most effective use of time in the summer. So goats and sheep would be better for milk in the summer months because they would be kept closer to the homestead or farm. When the winter comes, all three of these animals start to produce less milk or even completely stop. Um, and also they would be brought in for the winter, so at this time, cattle's milk would be much easier to get because you could just walk out to the barn where they were staying and they also produce a whole lot more milk than the sheep or goats would. Uh, so just things to think about. I'm guilty of it myself, but I do try to drink goat's milk whenever I can. Um, it is hard to find, but you can find it some places and I definitely drink it more in the summer. Sheep's milk, you can forget about it. I don't even know where to find that in the store. If I'm working on it, Homestead will be coming soon. Then I will try these out. Uh, but how about you guys? Do you have any of these milks in your grocery store? Do you keep any animals? Have you tried any of these things? We would love to hear. If you'd like any recipes, share your experiences. That's why I do these videos.